It's now my great honor to introduce our final session, the special dialogue with the Secretary General of ASEAN, Dato Lim Jokhoi, with Professor Nishimura. Professor Nishimura, the floor is yours. Hello, Dato. Hello, Thank you Nishimura very much. It's a very busy time. Thank you very much for us to giving you a very special time. Yeah. We had a very good discussion, session one, session two. Session one, impact of the COVID-19. Session two, new reality. And the, considering the very, very the good discussion, I'd like to ask you two sets of questions. One is the, a kind of the question uh, pertaining to the economic the, uh, matters. I, I am the, uh, thinking the very three sets of the question. This is based on our, our session one, session two. First, maybe it's very uh, uh, time limited. So you can please answer all these three elements of the, the major economic the questions. One element. What are the major challenges for us in to recover quickly from the damage caused by pandemic? We discussion, we have a discussion, session one, session two. And element two, what are the next steps pertaining to the this is not to the detailed discussion, but to the core of the ASEAN integration, ASEAN single window in the context of the very important today's issue, digital ASEAN. And the third element, what other next steps for ASEAN regarding the implementation, implementation of the RCEP? These three important elements uh, the, uh, uh, I, 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 I think the uh, listening to the session one and the session two. Please first answer uh, in this, these two, three important elements. And the, on top of that, if we want to deliver the this is a very important uh, uh, point, which Secretary General want to deliver our colleagues, our, our round table peoples. Okay, for your side, uh, please respond to, to one set of economic matters. Yeah. Thank you, Shimura san Welcome to Jakarta. Uh, okay. Um, your question is: What are the major challenges uh, for ASEAN to recover quickly from the damages caused by the pandemic? I think it's untold story that the pandemic has uh, caused a lot of uh, distress and also and um, as economic downturn to many of our member states, but uh, what is more important is now, as we begin to recover, I'm particularly concerned about the uneven vaccinations rates among our member states. You know, some of member states has reached 80%. For example, Singapore, Malaysia, even Cambodia is now reaching to that stage. So there are effort to increase the rollout of vaccination. And we are very confident by the end of the year, ASEAN will reach at that target. Obviously, currently it's about 30% of total population receive at least one dose of the COVID-19, but the rollout even in Indonesia has been very much uh, impressive. I think we are very confident that will be. The figure is encouraging, remain, uh, 
uh, inadequate in certain area, but we are very upbeat about there does a need for us to speed up the vac vaccination rollout, particularly in country where the rate are still relatively uh, very low. COVID-19 uh, response fund and the establishment of the ASEAN Center of Public Health Emergency and Emerging Diseases are some of the regional activities that we have uh, hope enable us to expedite the uh, vaccination process. Uh, this will also strengthen our capability and to prevent, detect, response to public health emergency. And the utilization of the uh, 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 technology uh, really helps us to further uh, improve our uh, measures toward uh, this uh, COVID-19. And it really helps us to boost the rollout of vaccination and also other aspect of uh, uh, measure we've done in ASEAN member state. Uh, we also need to be mindful of uneven recovery that is currently taking place across and within sectors of the economy and segments of society. Uh, this issue, if left unaddressed, which you have all discussed about it, may result in growing inequality, not only inequality in terms of income, but inequality in terms of access to digital technology, access to uh, what we uh, 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 see the next wave of our economic growth and is a driver for economic growth in ASEAN. So we need to make sure that uh, this uh, uh, technology, uh, which is part of the uh, as, uh, recovery framework that we uh, put in place, and we'll make sure that they are accessible to everyone or the society in ASEAN. At the same time, I think the broad impact may pose risk to our peace, stability in the region, which we have enjoyed for the last many, many decades. I think this is very important. It has some, some uh, peace and stability in, in, uh, implication. The focus of our intervention should now be on the sector and segment of society that are most uh, vulnerable by the pandemic, uh, especially the MSMEs, women and youth, and also the vulnerable group of the, uh, uh, that associated with tourism. I think these are very, very important area that we should try to, uh, rec um, to uplift them, recover them as soon as possible. And uh, finally, it is important for us to speed up the recovery process in the area of travels and tourism industries, uh, which contribute of 12.1% of GDP, an equivalent of more than $380 billion. I think huge amount of the uh, activities in each country. For example, in Indonesia, a lot of MSME are very much dependent on uh, tourism. Uh, in Thailand, uh, very much dependent on the activity of tourism. That's why you see the first opening up of the activities at tourism area. For example, in, in uh, Phuket, Langkawi, and now uh, tourism will be open in Bali uh, and this month, I think. Uh, some countries have introduced measure to gradually ease mobility restriction, such as domestic travel, bubbles, sandbox programs. Regionally, uh, we have finalized uh, the, the post uh, COVID recovery plan for ASEAN tourism. We have expedited the implementation of ASEAN Travel Corridor Arrangement Framework, which was endorsed by our minister in, in August. Uh, this essentially facilitate business travels without, as well as other activity of essentials. Uh, eventually we'll go to tourism uh, travels. 
but without compromising public health and security. Uh, this is particularly challenging as there are various protocols and put in place by ASEAN member states such as uh, mandatory quarantine, testing requirement, vaccine uh, uh, mutual recognition. These are area where ASEAN travel corridors are now engaging so that we will be able to use this travel corridor next wave our uh, uh, opening. And hopefully the leader will endorse this in this month and work has to be carried out in subsequently in the months to come. And tourism minister will be meeting in January in Sihanoukville, I think. And our, our health minister will be meeting in November in in Indonesia. I don't know whether it's Bali or Jakarta or yet to be. I think these are the two events that we're looking how this as a travel corridor can be further implemented and refined based on either bilateral or trilateral or quadrilateral depending. But the framework is a, is a provide a platform for a further work to be done. On the next steps pertaining to ASEAN, a single window, I think, context of digital ASEAN. ASEAN single window uh, already operationalized in all ASEAN member states. Uh, uh, very, I think the only region in the world that have uh, this sort of uh, uh, arrangement. And five M uh, ASEAN member states, uh, Cambodia, Malaysia, Myanmar, Singapore, and Thailand are able to exchange uh, ASEAN custom declaration document through this platform remaining uh, ASEAN member state to join live operation and this document within this year, I think 2021. Indonesia and Thailand have also confirmed their readiness to conduct end-to-end -end electronic phytosanitary certificate December 2021, which is uh, expected to be live operation by 2022. With three document exchanges on 2022, ASEAN will be in a position as one of the most advanced region transforming itself to paperless trading. We hope we will be uh, trading without any papers, any document, or have to go through digital. This would add more confidence, I think, to the region as we achieve a, trying to double our intra-ASEAN trade by 2025. Doubling mean not in terms of Percentage doubling mean in terms of the volume because uh, percentage will be a little bit difficult to double it. ASEAN is also working uh, out the detail expanding ASEAN single window to dialogue partners and all the ASEAN plus one FTA, including China, Japan, Korea, United States, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, this will allow us exchange with other trade related document is certificate origin, and we hope this will further enhance utilization of our plus one FTA and, and also the other FTA that we are working with. Uh, additionally, I think uh, the next steps uh, for our recovery uh, very much uh, basic on what we need to make sure that RCEP is the ASEAN-led agreements. I think we have to dispel this. A lot of media are saying it's a China-led. I don't think it's China-led, it's ASEAN-led all the way. The chair is ASEAN, Iman Bombagio bon from Indonesia. I think we have to dispel it. Our editor should understand that this is ASEAN plus-led mechanism, not others mechanism. So firstly, we have uh, signed this agreement last year in a big bang. We must make sure that we must implement it. The rectification threshold can be achieved this year uh, 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 and enter into force 60 days after January when we, uh, we are targeted. And by the look of it, ASEAN will achieve its target so is ASEAN plus country will also target. 
this threshold require ratification by six ASEAN and non-ASEAN three signatory. We are working closely with ASEAN member states and non-ASEAN country, uh, non-ASEAN RCEP country to expedite the respective domestic uh, procedure. You know, China is already in door to rectify it. Japan is on board and hopefully uh, New Zealand. So the non-ASEAN is already uh, qualified the quota and six ASEAN, Singapore, recently uh, Laos, I'm hoping Brunei, uh, Cambodia, Thailand has already passed through parliament, We're looking into Malaysia. So we are very hopeful that it can be implemented. This is going to be the largest FTA with 30% of the population and 30% of the GDP. And a lot of it very much, uh, uh, very much uh, a bit about the future prospect of this region. Secondly, works on entering into force of agreement uh, is currently um, this work preparation institutional organizations instrument, such as work program, rule of procedure for the future RCEP joint committee. Uh, the work program on economic and technical cooperation also being role be discussed as well as uh, the establishment RCEP secretariat. Uh, this is to ensure once agreement into, into force, we will be in the position to implement in a good way. Thirdly, we are also conducting outreach web banner to the business community to inform them on the technical requirement of the RCEP agreements. Uh, this agreement brings benefits uh, to business and, and on, not only for them to understand the provision of the uh, requirements stipulated in the agreements, in, uh, but the secretary will, will work closely with East Asia Business Council and we will organize uh, so far two web banner on trade related uh, chapters and we'll continue uh, with other topics such as trade and services, investment, e-commerce in other chapter. Uh, we will really welcome this collaboration with the uh, business people, uh, other organization to expand uh, our outreach to other business. I'm sure similarly other uh, non-ASEAN RCEP countries also doing this similar uh, outreach to the business people and community. I think we need only not only the business community, but also the public to understand what's all about uh, the public. I think uh, works underway uh, to look into area where we can outreach to everyone of us in, in, in ASEAN in particular. Uh, the next steps also what we're doing is the, um, we, we are uh, working closely to start our secretariat. Uh, and RCEP uh, Secretariat, uh, which will be the main engine for the implementation of the RCEP. So those are a few things that we are working at Nishimura San. Hopefully this will uh, uh, clear the air of what's going on in this region. I'm sorry, we cannot hear you. I think, thank you very much. That uh, ASEAN should be proud of ASEAN way. When after was proposed, nobody believed it, but ASEAN did it. The same when ASEAN single window was Propose, nobody believe it, but did it. And RCEP, that was 10 years ago, next year, Chair Cambodia, 2012. ASEAN proposed, yes, area did a very important role to make a concept of RCEP. That's definitely RCEP is a ASEAN's proposal. And this was, did it. ASEAN way, the consensus way, is only way 
to overcome the most difficult question and ASEAN did it. And Dato was involved for this ASEAN way for a few decades. When the after was proposed, that was directly involved in this, this achievement. RCEP, single window, that was excellent as a, what can I say, result of the for decades of the achievement. Welcome. Thank you very much. Area would like to, area has a responsibility to the implementation or to promote the RCEP because the fundamental research result was done by area in 2012. You can see the mid-term review of the AC2015. Clearly, the RCEP was mentioned in the formal, formal document. Next, that was thank you very much. Next is the a relatively political or geopolitical the uh, interest of the journalists. The three three elements, please bear in mind the end to answer uh, these kind of the interest. This is also related with our the, uh, sessions. First element: When can ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific be operationalized under the context of the, 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 the broader geopolitical situation. And element two, what role can ASEAN play to maintain stability in the region during the US China competition. And maybe this is a very sensitive, difficult question. So, uh, what are the next steps to bring the agreed five point consensus on Myanmar to fruition? Maybe not necessary to respond to, to, to uh, the individually, but Please, considering these three elements, I we would like to listen to your that was the the, the uh, opinion. Thank you. Please, uh, AOIP is not new. I think it has been in the ASEAN uh, program for quite some time. Only that we have endorsed the concept of AOIP in 2020. And uh, since adoption, the AOIP has uh, served as one of the key reference for our external partner in promoting real cooperation in ASEAN. Uh, we welcoming, in welcoming the development of increased number of partners likewise manifested the uh, support for AOIP. Uh, our focus in OIP is very much uh, the same as other people, rule-based, all those uh, principles, but the key uh, element in our AOIP is cooperation. Cooperation brings a lot of benefit and cooperation brings a lot of peace, stability in the region. We want peace and stability so that we can develop our region, our regional prosperity. And in order to that, uh, we uh, increase our, uh, reinforce our utility of the AYP as a framework for cooperation between ASEAN and its partners. I, I, I think that ASEAN can pursue a discussion on how to mainstreaming uh, and operationalize most of these key priority area where there's a lot of convergence in all AOIP concept, whether it's in Japan concept or US concept or EU concept in other people's concept in the area of maritime cooperation. I think uh, 
even India. Uh, maritime cooperation is an area that everybody can work closely to make sure we maintain this region, a region of peace, a region of stability, as well as uh, cooperation in making sure that we, 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 we really work closely in the area maritime. And another one is connectivity. Connectivity is key to the development of the region no peace and security. We have master plan of ASEAN connectivity. We have a Belt and Road. We have other connectivity. I think we can see where there's synergy, where there's a conversion. We can work closely in order to enhance connectivity so that this will further uh, uh, increase prosperity in the region. And certain connectivity need to be able to work closely. The other elements in our AOIP is you, uh, uh, sustainable development, uh, and we, we can work closely with the UN on some of the sustainable development agenda, as well as our agenda in the uh, ASEAN Blueprint 2025. And there are so many other economic activities in the area of uh, Indo-Pacific. I think we can uh, work out, see how we can best ad agree among ourselves and, and develop those uh, area of cooperation. And this can be done to various other ASEAN-led mechanism, including ASEAN plus one. We will be working with ASEAN plus one country. We can work within EAS. We can do with the uh, 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 ASEAN plus three and other uh, uh, region. So that's OIP. Work is in progress. Uh, to implement AOIP and hopefully uh, because of the pandemic there are so many activity was uh, uh, postponed or cancelled and I hope that when the pandemic uh, recede there will be a lot of activity in the area of cooperation in uh, AOIP and for that uh, we want to see this region maintain peace and stability and for that, we see the uh, US and China dialogue, uh, a major uh, trading partner of ASEAN. Uh, China is number one trading partner and increasingly, in number, increasingly important investment for uh, uh, FDI for ASEAN. The same as US is a uh, number one uh, investment to ASEAN and also number two major trading partner. And we will see that they have contributed substantively to the economic development and economic growth of the region, thus uh, in a way uh, helping us to, uh, uh, to increase our community building. I think we want to see uh, some stability in, in the relationship between ASEAN and China. And these are all August well for every one of us, including them. So we see the ASEAN primary contribution uh, to the region peace stability are uh, twofold. One is building community among its members and to ensure that we have a peace and stability in the region, uh, hence, uh, one or less area in the region could be a source of uh, instability. We don't want, want to see that. We want to see a peaceful, good relation between the two big giant and we, the, the, the competition will be very healthy, but at the same time, we want to make sure they are uh, within the uh, context of uh, prosperity in the region. On the other hand, ASEAN also provide platform for dialogue and cooperation for regional uh, countries, including uh, US and China. While both the US and China have their own bilateral channels of dialogue, their presence and participation in ASEAN-led mechanism, such as East Asia Summit, ASEAN Regional Forum, ASEAN Defense Minister meeting, plus provide them another platform for interaction, uh, which they could convey amidst their peers as well as their respective position on issue. Uh, 
this mechanism is provide them with the opportunity to pursue, I think, cooperative undertakings and to develop a confident measure and foster better understanding among their respective officials and people. I think uh, mentally, uh, the challenge for ASEAN is just for other stakeholders in the region, how to ensure uh, there is interest, their interests are uh, not disregarded as a major power uh, uh, to pursue this. The need for ASEAN to be relevant as, as possible, as all more needed at this time. I think the bright side is that both US and China continues to pronounce the support for ASEAN centrality, as well as ASEAN being in the driving force in the regional affairs in this region. We hope such manifestation of support would be pursued substantively and uh, enhanced in the future. And in the area of uh, the Myanmar issue, I think this is a uh, an issue where our friends in the media are very much uh, interested. Uh, I know the five point consensus call for one immediate cessation of violence in Myanmar, dialogue among key stakeholders, special envoy of ASEAN chair, and provision of humanitarian assistance to AHA Center, and special envoy and delegation to visit Myanmar. We have a special envoy being uh, 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 agreed by, uh, by ASEAN. Special envoy is very much uh, ceased with the work on helping to bridge the gap that uh, that's uh, happening in Myanmar. And hopefully that special envoy will be able to, uh, to go there and have uh, uh, some uh, discussion. And this all depends on how we uh, uh, see the, the position of uh, the situation there. We want to see Myanmar to be stable because they are part of ASEAN and unstable Myanmar, Myanmar has an implication to ASEAN. So the special envoy is very much seized with all these elements. But on my part, I think uh, I'm uh, head of humanitarian assistance in ASEAN. I have done my part by uh, the consensus for is to provide humanitarian assistance to Myanmar through AHA Center. Uh, we have a pledging conference to support the Myanmar humanitarian assistance uh, convened on the 18th of August 2021. Uh, we uh, managed to raise uh, amount more than 8 million US dollars in monetary and in kind contribution. Uh, uh, pledges by uh, either medical supply, equipment, or vaccine. We continue uh, further to receive pledges in contribution around 2 million after the pledging uh, conference. So we are very grateful to our dialogue partner and ASEAN friends, uh, member state, uh, very much come up with this uh, pledging. And we, we hope more pledge, uh, pledging will be uh, 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 given to us by our friends in the future. Uh, the first batch of the humanitarian assistance to Myanmar, uh, comprising of 1 million, 1.1 million worth of medical supply and equipment was handed to Myanmar Red Cross on the 15th September. And item delivered in the batch will be distributed to our uh, to hospitals in various other parts of Myanmar to Red Cross. Preparation is also underway for the second batch of humanitarian assistance later this month and the third batch in November. Um, in order to effectively carry out uh, this plan, ASEAN cannot work alone. ASEAN must work constructively and in a practical manner we have our partners, of course, with friends and among ASEAN member states. It is important that we should not politicize ASEAN humanitarian assistance in Myanmar to ensure that support reaches to the effective community in needs in expedited, in expedited manners 
uh, without impediment. I think we we have to work closely. This is humanitarian assistance. Humanitarian assistance means to everyone and every friends in Myanmar, irrespective of political affiliation. I think this is very important. I think in conclusion, I think a peaceful resolution to the current situation rests on the people of Myanmar. I think the Myanmar people has to resolve themselves. Of course, we can help them and uh, it won't be reached overnight. It will take some time. ASEAN stands ready to assist Myanmar on the path to such solution through uh, facilitating, facilitating reconciliation in constructive dialogues among all parties, I think, provided we will continue to provide humanitarian assistance. I think during this process, uh, ASEAN could become a bridge to bring helping hands uh, together for the benefit of the Myanmar people. I think this is uh, a very important aspect because uh, Myanmar has uh, suffered from the uh, third wave of uh, COVID-19 uh, and, and we need to help them. And this assistance is uh, very important in terms of medical supply and medicine as well as vaccine. Uh, so uh, this will help them to, to mitigate those uh, uh, COVID-19. So it is the people Myanmar that we are concerned to help them. As a head of humanitarian assistance, we will, will work uh, more diligently, uh, double work to get more assistance from friends and dialogue partners. Uh, that's what we're doing in the uh, Secretariat. Thank you very much. Yeah. They're remembering the establishment of ASEAN 1967. Situation is more than the terrible comparing with these days. The existence of ASEAN is really symbolizing the peace and the stability. So the world should be the existence of ASEAN and how to strengthen ASEAN. The, the meaning of ASEAN centrality is a meaning of the peace and the stability in the world now. So the ASEAN integration, ASEAN community building is a very important answer to the world and stability. I believe area is the surely a part of ASEAN and the, we'd like to the very honored to support the ASEAN secretary, the, the, the very great, the works. Anyway, thank you very much. There are uh, a uh, uh, very comprehensive response from Secretary General. So I'd like to back to the floor to, to read here. Okay. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you so much for, for an excellent discussion. And Dato Lim Jokhoi, we are honored and so very deeply appreciative of you taking the time out of your extremely busy schedule to share your deep and rich knowledge and insights with us today. So thank you from all of us.